Okay, hey guys, this is chapter three of All Falls Down. Oh, and for those of you who keep asking, am I gonna do chapter 15 to a time boy's heart? No, I'm not. It says don't read 15. I don't I don't have a pass to waste, girl. So Killian and I decided to head to a party. Yay, turn up, turn up. Hey, hopefully I don't get kidnapped or some crazy shit, because I don't got the time. But first, I had to change. Okay, good, cause I was I wasn't gonna wear my work uniform to a party. I had I was wondering about that. You can come in if you want. I don't know. Wouldn't your parents mind? You don't seem like someone who would be afraid of someone's parents. I'm not afraid. Parents don't normal. What? Parents don't normal like their daughters hanging around out with someone like me. Don't normally like their daughters hanging out with someone like me. Come on. You've got nothing to worry about. Trust me. You can wait in here. I don't get to see your bedroom. No, girl. I didn't mind showing Killian where I live. He was from North Philly and definitely didn't expect me to live in some mansion. I wasn't okay with what I wasn't okay with was showing him my bedroom, technically Rose's office. The bedroom screamed juvenile delinquent foster kid. <laughs> I wasn't ready to broadcast that label to the world. I'll be right back. Let's see. What are we going to wear to this party? Um, definitely not anything. It could work. No, I'll try something else, girl. Let's go with edging. Because I, uh, I don't know. Hopefully that looks way better. This could work. Totally my style and I look sexy as hell. Yeah, let's wear this. Alrighty. I thought I heard a male's voice in here. Oh, shit. Care to identify yourself, stranger? I'm Killian. Killian Gray? The one and only. You're Devin Gray's son. So you know my father? I, uh, I used to. I mean, not personally. You know. You must be Dove's mom. Actually, I'm her. You ready to go? <laughs> Are you blushing, Killian? What? No. Of course not. Where are you going? We're going to hang out. Maybe watch a movie. Hmm. Tonight's a school night, you <laughs> you know. Don't worry, I'll be home tonight. Eventually. Let's go, Killian. Don't worry, I'll keep her safe. It was nice to meet you, Rose. It was nice to meet you, Rose. We've been driving for almost 20 minutes when I finally realized this this party was not in North Philly. <laughs> Where are we going? I already told you, we're going to a party. <laughs> Where? In the next town over? Something like that. Mm, what the hey-ho, yay. Y'all love this mansion here, child. I promise y'all. Where the hell are we? This, my dear, is the exclusive Axton Manor. Why does that name sound so familiar? You ready to go inside? Do I have to? Come on, Dove. I love her name. Dove. Dove. <laughs> oh, crap. Okay, so what the hell? I mean, is it going to go to somewhere? Okay, there we go. I hate those long ass blackout moments. Oh God. No Tweedle D and fucking Tweedle fucking dumb. We steps in the party. Was that Sean? Sean Axton. Oh yeah. This is quite the party, Killian. Um, is this your typical scene? 
Not exactly. A couple of my boys are at the party and wanted me to swing by. I should probably go find them. Are you going to be okay by yourself? I'm a big girl. I can handle myself. See you later then, Doug. Just let me know when you're ready to leave. And here come his stalking ass. I thought I saw you walk in. I, you know you see me walk in, girl. Who's the stalker now? <laughs> Something about Sean sent shockwaves through my system, y'all. <laughs> he was your typical arrogant blonde prep boy, and yet I found him sexy as hell. Honestly, I wasn't much. It wasn't much of a surprise that I was attracted to him, considering my last boyfriend. But that's the story for another time. Actually, I came with a friend. Yeah, I saw that. Killian Gray. I've seen him around here a few times. So his name is, so that's Killian's last name. Okay. Him and his boys are nothing but trouble. <laughs> Sound like a grumpy old man, Sean. Get off my lawn, you crazy hooligans. <laughs> You're kind of funny, you know. Well, I try. Oh, well, I do try. Um, are you supposed to be over here talking to me? What do you mean? I mean, I think your girlfriend wants to murder me with a dull butter knife. I'm sorry about her. She can get really jealous sometimes. We're just talking. Nothing to be jealous of. Tell that to her. Maybe I should get out of here. You don't have to leave. I'm just going to get some air. And talk to your girlfriend. What happened to the people that was making out? Why am I here? I don't fit in with these people. Who the hell are y'all? You're very dramatic. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, don't mind Yana. She can be a bitch sometimes. I'm um, Max. Dove, I know. Everyone at Ridgeview, uh, prep knows who you are. Well, that's great. Don't feel too special. What she means is that Ridgeview hasn't had a new student in years. Years? It's a very close off school. The headmaster usually doesn't allow outsiders. Yeah. I know that. I get a very warm I, I got a very warm welcome from the headmaster trials. We were all kind of shocked when they announced there was a new we were getting a new student. That was the first thing Yana said to me that didn't have a thick layer of a blunt sarcasm on top of it. Yana is really pretty, but she didn't look like all the other bimbos in this school. She had a hint of danger in her eyes, but I doubt she'd ever done anything about it. She craved excitement and was obviously bored to death at Ridgeview. Those kind of girls always make for the best, for the best friends. I have to admit, I was intrigued by her. Marks, on the other hand, looked like he would be too afraid to do anything out of the ordinary. He had very grown up and a privileged, crushy part of Philly. I bet his mommy still does his laundry. I highly doubt he ever done one bad thing in his life, let alone done some, something dangerous and exciting. Don't you think it's kind of strange that there are never any new kids at Ridgefield? Not really. It's just how it's always been. Where are you from, little girl? Um, tell the truth. I've been around. Who the hell are they? Luckily for me, they just let that slide. I guess my answer was satisfactory. Stop. Cell phone things. <sighs> uh, that's where he rose. Dub, it's nearly 11. You need to come home ASAP. Okay, and now read the unknown. Can't wait to see you. Who the fuck is that? I should get going. Either of you seen Killian? Who? The guy who you walked in with here was uh he with with was in the kitchen last I saw him, I think. Later guys. Oh her heels were yeah.
One fluid and then they were nine. I guess Killian is not in here. I should get out of here. I still don't understand why you're hanging out with Dove. Do you like her or something? Okay, shit. Well, I'm not leaving now, bitch. I told you this like a thousand times, Jill. I still don't get it. Your dad is making you be friends with some girl, some outside freak. His dad? Who the hell is Sean's dad and why does he care about me? People really need to stop calling me an outsider. Why does Charles care so much about her? Charles? As in head math for Charles? He told me that she was a special case and needed some extra attention. So he told me to be, uh, become her walking buddy and become her friend. And that's why we had to go all the way to North Philly for some crappy burgers. <laughs> I knew he was following me. It's all a part of the job, baby. This stinking ass. And I actually thought he wanted to be my friend. And anyone who wonders why I hate have trust, and everyone wonders why I have trust issues. I need to find Kimmy and get the hell out of here. Right, where the hell is this stinking ass at? I'm so stupid for thinking someone like him would actually want to hang out with someone like me. I was so frustrated by the Sean situation, I nearly forgot about the text I got outside. Not the one from Rose, but the one from the unknown number. Nobody would have, ha nobody would have my cell phone number. I just got this morning. All right, girl. Okay. Maybe it was the wrong number. There you are. You ready to get out of here? You have no idea. Why is Sean, why is this Sean thing bothering me so much? I barely knew the guy. Why do I care about, so much about this? Um, maybe this is, I barely knew him and he still chose to betray me. Uh, he tried to get me to trust him to be his friend. I'm used to being betrayed by loved ones, and, but total strangers decided to do it too. Maybe I deserved it. What's on your mind, Doug? You look sad. I think that's the last emotion I've ever seen on your face. Well, the first emotion I've ever seen. I'm not sad. Whatever you say. Um, so you're going to tell me what's going on? Mm, tell them all. I've had a really long day. I guess I'm just not used to being around so many people. I get it. It can be a lot to get used to. I still wonder why Killian was even at the party. He really doesn't seem like the type that would hang out with all these kind of people. I guess you really can't judge a book by its cover. Except with Sean. He was exactly who I thought he was. A lying, arrogant, shady prep school boy. Clearly you have something on your mind. And I have just the thing to cure whatever. Whatever else you baby. What are we doing on the roof of a hotel? We just look around. <laughs> when I finally put the attitude away and looked around, I saw the most breathtaking view of Philadelphia. You can see the whole city from up here. I know. Now come over, now come here, goof. Not goof, bitch. I'm a fucking goof. God, y'all. Sorry for the crying ass kid in the back. This is incredible. <laughs> you really could see the entire city, but up here was surreal. It was like you were the only person in the world. The noise and chaos from the town below was silent. All that was left was you in the sky. It was beautiful. Wow. Just wow. How do you know about this place? Well, I spent a lot of time up here when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. You just spent your childhood on rooftops. My dad owns this place. Your dad owns this place. I do believe that's what I said. Why didn't I know that? You didn't ask. <laughs> You're right. And usually the first question I ask someone when I meet them is, Do you own a hotel? <laughs> My father owns it. Technically. Plus, it's called Grey Hotel. 
Or did you not read the sign when you came in? You never even told me your last name. I figured you'd find out on your own. <laughs> I've got a bit of a reputation around here. What kind of reputation? What kind of reputation? Phone buzzes. Saved by the bell. It's Rose thinking ass, ain't it? It's Rose. Yep. I better get home. Alright, let's go. Rose, what the fuck do you want, girl? Do you have any idea what time it is? Um, do I wanna? What was Rose like? I'm really sorry, Rose. I lost track of time. That's the whole reason I got you a cell phone, Dove. I know. I'm sorry. Go to bed. We'll talk about this in the morning, girl. No, we won't, girl. Cause in the morning, I'm liable to be a bitch. I'm just saying. This has been the longest day of my life. Just remember, it could have been a lot worse, Dove. A lot worse. Funny as you said that. Oh, who the fuck? Who the fuck are you? What the hell are you doing here? What? You didn't miss me, sugar? Oh, girl, you're not gonna call me sugar, honey. She won't be dealing with that. <laughs> hey, guys, it's the Arthur. MB. No mindless behavior, y'all. I hope you enjoyed the first three chapters and follow along with me on this adventure. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Alright, y'all. That was that. Alright, now.